Greetings everyone, it's Coach Ed here today to talk about the New York Football Giants. The team that I root for, one of the teams that I root for. And I was thinking about what will it take for the New York Football Giants to improve their overall play. So I want to jump into that real quick and discuss that. But before I do, if you're new to this platform, make sure you subscribe and hit the notifications so you know when I post new content. And everyone always continue to like and share on all social media platforms so you can help this platform continue to grow. Thank you all. Well, there's so much going on in the Giants football world. From porous play, atrocious play, however, whatever adjective, however you want to phrase it, whatever. Everyone's right. This team is broken. This team lacks talent. This team is not coaching well. This team overall is not managed well. You can check off every last one of those sport, oh, every last one of those points because it's true. In the giant football world, in the social media world, the Twitter X world, however you want to break it down, there are two facets, there are two sides. And the things that are spoken on both sides have been true to a certain extent. But now it's gotten worse than any of us could have ever imagined. Now, there are those who don't like Daniel Jones for their particular reasons, their facts, their facts. Okay. And there are those who believe Daniel Jones is not the only reason there's issues with this team. Argument for both sides. See, football is the ultimate team sport. It's not like baseball. It's not like basketball. It's not like hockey. It's not like a lot of these quote unquote team sports where you can have a superstar take over the game and help the team win. Now, I'm not saying there aren't players in the game of football who can take over a game? Yes, there there have been. I grew up seeing one of the greatest in Lawrence Taylor. And Lawrence Taylor would force an offense into so many tough, so many difficult situations. They would come to the line of scrimmage and have to find out where he was so you can adjust your blocking to him. You would sometimes have to give help, extra help, sometimes triple teaming him. So yes, the game of football, you can see someone take over to a certain extent, but you still need the other 10 players to step up and produce. Now we talk about the quarterback play. Well, yes. Ultimately, the quarterback still needs the offensive line to block. Yes, some quarterbacks help their offensive line by getting rid of the ball quickly. Yes, I agree to that. They also, with their pre-snap read, identify what the defense is doing. So that can help the offense. Whether he slides a line protection towards a particular player, whatever the case may be. He gets on a special alignment with the wide receiver just by giving him a look, a little signal, whatever. 
So yes, those do factor in. But just like I talked about the offensive line, your skill guys have to catch the ball. They do. A quarterback can throw the ball, but if the skill guy, receiver, running back, tight end, if they're not catching the ball, then the pass was obsolete. So ultimately, the game of football is based on all your players out there, defensively too, special teams as well. See, there's a saying, when you play football, you're only as good as your weakest link. And that's usually what happens here. So when we look at the Giants, where is their weakest link? But I'm going to flip it. I'm not even going to say where's their weakest link. Because most of you will hit me with the quarterback, the offensive line, the wide receiver, no number one wide receiver. We can't get the ball downfield. Defensively, no pass rush, missed tackles, uh, inability to stay with your receiver. And you know what? A lot of it, if not all of it, is true. But I'm going to flip it to this way. What is the New York Football Giants' greatest strength? Some may say offensively, Saquon Barkley, whenever he's healthy. Andrew Thomas, probably being the only reliable offensive lineman you can count on. John Michael Schmitz is a rookie. He's still developing. But Andrew Thomas, you know when he's out there, you don't worry about him consistently playing porously. Defensively, you're going to say Dexter Lawrence if he's not getting double teamed. But again, it's far and few in terms of the strength of the team, some of you will argue. And I do understand it. As a coach, I've always tried to be extremely optimistic because when you have a level of optimism, it does trickle down into your organization. It trickles down into your players and they play with a, a higher level of confidence. But when you're pessimistic, that becomes a negative cancer and it trickles. And I fight myself these past few days with optimism, pessimism. And it's hard. It's hard for me, of all people. I know most of you may not know me to that magnitude, but I'm trying to help you understand. But then when I go into my coaching mode and I say, let's look at the film, let's break it down. I know I see talent. There is some talent there. What we're doing, it, what we are doing as an organization to foster better development, I don't know. I'm not in the meetings. I'm not there at practice. I don't know what the teachings are. But for me, that's where it starts. It starts with the coaching. See, I talked about initially how to improve the team's overall play. And it starts with better coaching. I'm not absolving the players. The players have to produce, period. But it does start with coaching. Coming up with better game plans, better scouting, breaking down the opposition, finding out better ways to attack them so that you as a team are in an advantageous situation. Then from there, holding all your players accountable, whether publicly or privately. I know most fans, there are some fans who, you know, they don't like the interaction between Dable and Daniel Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, that's football. And it happens. Some will say, oh, well, he did it to Daniel Jones. Why not the others? You don't know if he hasn't already. 
See, sometimes you may have stripped down those players enough in practice. You don't want to do it anymore during the game because it might not help. Daniel Jones has, to some of you, this persona, this his facial expression that shows that lacks emotion. But didn't we go through that with Eli Manning too? See, sometimes you need to be stoic and show that, you know what? The walls are not cracking because when you're in that quarterback position, if you're cracking, ladies and gentlemen, the rest of the team is gonna crack. See, if the head coach yells, you know, it's rants, however you wanna categorize his actions, players can adapt to that. But when you have a quarterback who's very stoic at all times and then all of a sudden starts to break, and that's what you will say, he's starting to break. And then you start to worry and you start to stress. I'm already there with Daniel Jones, but not because of that, but because of his play, the constant hits. He's playing what I, he's feeling the pressure. Whether he's trying to force things He's not reading properly. He's panicking and leaving the pocket too early. He's not stepping up into the pocket. All of that is true, ladies and gentlemen. And that's because of constant pressure, constant quarterback hits, constant hits in the running game when he's running, sacks. All of that adds up. This goes back to what I said. To improve the overall play, it starts. It's not the only reason or the only thing, but it starts with the coaching. The coaches have to do a better job with an offensive and defense and special teams game plan, with your teaching of the players, the techniques. You have to do a better job with these techniques. Putting the players in the right position so they can be successful. <clears throat> Excuse me. If players are not in the best position to be successful, it will eventually strip at their confidence and tear them down. That's all I have right now. I wanted to bring that to you and give you my thoughts on the New York football giants on how they can have improved play. Time will tell, who knows, but thanks again for everyone for tuning in, listening to this perspective. I really appreciate you all. And as I always say in sports, make sure you turn it on and turn it up. Have a great one.